Russian military propagandists are starting to openly talk about the need to end the war with Ukraine as quickly as possible. The huge losses of Russian military, which can no longer be hidden, are making a depressing impression on Russians. In a live broadcast on one of the Russian TV channels, retired Colonel Military Observer of Komsomolskaya Pravda, Mikhail Timoshenko, spoke about the internal mood in Russia regarding the war and the situation in the army. According to him, more and more Russians are beginning to think about how many more lives will be lost and whether it is worth continuing the war amid the chaos with payments and benefits for combat veterans. People are starting to think, well, to hell with it. How many more guys are going to die? We don't need this anymore, he said. The propagandist also emphasized the level of corruption in the Russian Defense Ministry, which has seriously bled the Russian army dry. Russia's total losses since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine now total 600,000. These figures are approaching the level of losses in the initial stages of Operation Barbarossa during World War II. The corresponding statement was made by the head of the NATO PA, U.S. Congress member Jerry Connolly, in a conversation with Radio Liberty. According to him, such a high level of losses is a reason for Western allies to draw certain conclusions about the state of the Russian army. According to the congressman, the Kremlin's decision to involve North Korean troops in the war against Ukraine demonstrates the weakness of the Russian army. It indicates that Russian potential is exhausted. The politician emphasized that North Korea has one of the largest armies in the world, but the last time it took part in military action was 70 years ago during the Korean War. The interlocutor believes that the DPRK expects to gain combat experience for its military during the war in Ukraine. As previously reported in September, the daily losses of the Russian army became the largest during the entire full-scale war. According to estimates by the British Defense Ministry, such dynamics are in particular connected with the battles in the Kursk region. A soldier from the 79th Airborne Assault Brigade knocked out a Russian tank with a javelin, which is a very difficult task. As a result, not only the tank but also its crew will never participate in combat. Forbes writes that a lone Russian tank equipped with a projectile-proof armor and a front mine carriage approached the Ukrainian paratroopers and that is when the fighter fired an American-made javelin anti-tank missile. The 50-pound infrared guided javelin is one of the best anti-tank missiles in the world and the 79th Air Assault Brigade's missile men are among the most skilled javelin shooters in the world. The knocked out Russian tank began to burn from the inside. All three crew members were saved, but for one of them, their clothes caught fire. The unburned tank crew tried to put out the fire that had engulfed their comrade, but at that moment the tank exploded. Getting into position to fire a javelin accurately is tough and dangerous work. Anti-tank teams must lie low, patiently track targets up to a mile away, fire a missile and then quickly move out of position. If the enemy detects you after the first launch, he will throw all his forces at you, explained a soldier from the 79th Assault Brigade. Ukrainian assault troops deploy their most aggressive soldiers to anti-tank teams. They can destroy a staggering amount of equipment. A missile man with the 79th Assault Brigade nicknamed Gagos destroyed 40 Russian vehicles in 18 months beginning in 2022. Another javelin gunner with the brigade, Junior Sergeant Andrei H, knocked out four vehicles in a single engagement in January. Knocking out just one tank is not that impressive, but for the defenders of eastern Ukraine, even small victories are preferable to defeat and retreat. It is worth noting that on July the 24th, the Ukrainian 79th Airborne Assault Brigade, holding the line near the town of Kurakovka, repelled one of the largest Russian attacks this year, a massive assault by 11 tanks, 45 infantry fighting vehicles, a BMPT tank, support vehicle, and 12 motorcycles with crews. By laying mines, 
launching drones, firing artillery and anti-tank missiles, the 79th Airborne Assault Brigade destroyed six tanks, seven combat vehicles and all 12 motorcycles. The brigade counted 40 Russians killed and 37 wounded. A Russian with the call sign Silva joined the Russian-Ukrainian war and volunteered for the Storm Z unit, which fought in the Donbass. He supported Ukraine and acted following the secret plan of the Freedom of Russia Legion Command. At some point, Silva blew up the commander and went over to the side of the Ukrainian forces. The combat path of the Russian pro-Ukrainian volunteer was told on the YouTube channel Vidu Shivdushu. In the first minutes of the conversation, Silva said that he was 24 years old and three months ago in the summer, he was at the front in the Ocheritain area west of Abdiivka in the Donbass. The Russian volunteered for the army and served for four months in the Storm Z unit before the transition. Former prisoners served alongside him, convicts, who were shot to force obedience. According to him, there was a man among the Russians who volunteered to personally carry out the execution. He cleaned up every tenth person. He shot every 10th person personally, right in the head, right before the formation. They thought maybe they would have more motivation. The commander approved, the Russian explained. Silva also spoke about the habit of the commanders of the Russian armed forces to zero out soldiers. The main reason for such actions is the refusal to storm Ukrainian positions, escape from the trenches, refusal to return to positions, refusal to bring ammunition and pull out the wounded. According to him, this is done by the entourage of the officer who leads the unit. Special people are not allocated for this. In addition, the volunteer explained why he did not join the SLR, having left the Russian Federation abroad. According to him, this option did not suit him, so he signed a contract to immediately go over to the Ukrainian side. At the same time, Silva began operating in September 2023, and already in February, he resolved all the issues. While going through the formalities, the Russian consulted with the Legion. One of his operations at the front was emptying a mine warehouse of an adjacent unit. When he decided to end his service, he blew up the commander of the Storm Z and crossed the front line. 